<laughs> Hello there, everybody. Bunna here, and in this video, we're going to explore whether or not your character's build actually matters in Ark Survival Evolved. In my 25 Tips and Tricks video, I briefly touched on the subject of your character's build having a small impact in your gameplay experience, namely in PvP situations where your survivor's hitbox changes based on your size. I then proceeded to get multiple conflicting comments from different viewers suggesting that this wasn't true and your character's hitbox doesn't change at all based on your size or gender. In contrast to this, some other viewers commented that arm length affects the reach of melee weapons, male characters have a faster swing speed, and your character's size impacts their ability to fit into certain spaces. All of this confusion is understandable given the misinformation found online, but I'm here to put all of this questioning and contradicting to rest. For the record, I was completely right in all of my prior statements, so all of you haters that left nasty comments for no reason, please do me a huge favor. Find the largest nearby object available and shove it directly up your ass. Topic number one, does your character's size impact the size of their hitbox? To test this, I had two of my good buddies help me out. Test subject number one is a male character with all of the sliders turned down, while test subject number two is a male character with all of the sliders turned up. One character is white, while the other one is black, as to keep this video racially diverse. Does that actually matter? Not even a little bit, but people seem to care about that shit for some reason. Test subject number one identifies as a black male, while test subject number two identifies as a white male, so I guess it's kind of a wash. Each survivor was provided with a full set of primitive flak gear and medical brews for testing purposes. For the first test, I wanted to see if a character's height changed the height of a hitbox. I positioned my character an equidistance away behind some railings and used a ladder to lock my perspective exactly 90 degrees perpendicular. As you can see in the footage, my reticle lined up perfectly with the head of test subject number one. Firing here results in a headshot, as indicated by the damage number and confirmation from my buddy. After firing, I made sure to not touch my mouse's rotation whatsoever and strafe my character directly sideways. As you can see, the reticle is positioned on test subject number two's chest, and upon firing we can see that the damage number is lower since it's not a headshot. Moving the reticle upwards on test subject number two results in a headshot, while firing at the same exact angle on test subject number one completely misses his character altogether. This confirms that the character's hitboxes did indeed change, and is fairly accurately represented by their height. Next, I wanted to test if the width of the character changed their hitboxes. To test this, I had test subject number one stand directly in front of test subject number two. If their hitboxes were the same, then test subject number one should be the one who gets damaged here. But as you can see, the bullets are traveling directly past his character model and hitting the other one. This is because test subject number two's hitbox is larger, given that his character is larger. This is further reinforced from the side as well, as test subject number one should technically take this bullet if their hitboxes were the same, but that is just simply not the case. I repeated all of these tests with two racially and sexually diverse female characters and came to the same exact conclusion in all three planes of height, width, and girth. So now we move on to topic number two. Does your character's gender change their hitbox? To test this, we have a male and female character with all of their sliders turned all the way down. Test subject number one identifies as a homosexual transgender flamingo, while test subject number two identifies as a heterosexual wet pickle. Ain't nobody got time for that! I've repeated all of the initial tests that were performed and concluded that the male character's hitbox is indeed larger than the female's in all three planes, including height, width, and girth. So now we move on to topic number three. Does gender affect your character's melee swing speed? Both test subjects have all of the sliders turned all of the way down. Both of these individuals identify as every race, gender, species, and sexual orientation at the same time, essentially making them both liaisons of the universe. If that's not good enough for Hollywood, then I don't know what is. Boom! I used a straw dummy to test the swing speed of each survivor using three different melee weapons, and in all three tests, the survivors had the same exact DPS output. Now at first, I took this at face value and thought this meant that they had the same exact swing speed given the lack of discrepancy between their DPS output, but after watching the footage back in editing and seeing the clear visual differences between the sword animations, I decided to test this out a little bit further. I recorded two separate clips of me using a metal sword to damage a wooden pillar down from full health until it was completely destroyed, one with a male character and one with a female character. As you can see, the male character is swinging substantially faster and ends up destroying the wooden pillar more than 30 seconds quicker than the female character. So now for topic number four, does having longer arms mean having a longer reach? One character has the shortest arms possible, while the other character has the longest arms possible. I used a straw dummy again to find the precise moment when melee hits began to register and switched into third-person orbital camera mode to compare between the two characters, testing both the pike and the sword. As you can see, arm length makes virtually no difference whatsoever when it comes to the reach of a particular weapon. I tested this with female characters as well just to confirm. This also means that there's virtually no difference in reach between male or female characters. And finally, topic number five. Does your character's size impact the spaces they can fit into? 
This is a bit of a hard one to test, as there's no specific ways of tracking the information or concrete numbers to base our findings off of. The simplest test that I could think of was to use a sloped ramp to see how far your survivor could progress forwards before the height of their bounding box stopped them, comparing a male character with all the sliders turned up and a female character with all the sliders turned down. As you can see, there is virtually no difference in the character's ability to squeeze into a lower area based on their relative size. This is the same for spaces that limit movement based on width as well, which I tested with walls that slope inwards towards each other. Testing this with a doorway and a ceiling over top further proves that your character's size doesn't change your ability to squeeze into tighter spaces, and upon switching into first-person mode you can see that your character's camera view of the game remains unchanged, even though the anatomical position of your eyes will be much different. Essentially what this means is that while your character's damage hitbox does change with your survivor's size, their bounding box for collision against structures or objects remains the same. More than likely this was done to avoid confusion in PvP scenarios while maintaining fairness in PvE content. So in conclusion, your character's size and gender does matter and can affect your gameplay in both PvE and PvP. The larger your character is, the easier you're going to be to hit. The smaller your character is, the harder you're going to be to hit. Male characters have faster swing speeds than female characters, but don't seem to have longer reaches. I hope this video cleared up some of the misconceptions and misinformation floating around on the internet and can help you all make informed decisions about the kind of character you're going to make. If you found this video enjoyable or helpful, then please be sure to leave it a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded woodland creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bonnet heart. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.